Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that you see these stories that we are mentioning of the previous prophets, for you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is a point of comfort. It is a point of strengthening for you. So that you know that your brethren, the messengers who were before you, they went through similar problems, just like you are facing today. وَكُلَّنْ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الرُّسُلِ مَا نُثَبِّتُ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ وَجَاءَكَ فِي هَذِهِ الْحَقُّ وَمَوْعِظَةٌ وَذِكْرَى لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah says every time we have mentioned the stories of those before you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is there so that your heart can be strengthened as a point of comfort for you, knowing that those before you have also been through similar to what you are going through. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the same way that he has granted a lesson for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and a point of comfort, may he give us also lessons by reading the stories of the past nations, seeing what they were involved in and they were destroyed. You know, if petrol mixed with firewood makes a huge flame, or it made a huge flame last year. Do we think that 10 years down the line, the one who mixes that petrol with the same firewood will not get a huge flame? That is being absurd. So if two things put together resulted in a huge inferno, the same two things put together 100 years later will result in the same inferno. The same applies. If deeds of the previous nations resulted in their destruction, do you think if we engage in the same deeds it will not result in our destruction allahu akbar think about that example then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commences one of the most beautiful surahs in the world or in the quran one of the most beautiful surahs that have ever been mentioned on this globe or in creation we are now relating to you the best of stories why the best of stories let me tell you we don't have as much time as one would have liked to go through the details of the, ex of the lessons we learn from Surah Yusuf. But we will go through a few. Why? Because almost everyone's life is directly or indirectly affected by Surah Yusuf. Let's start drawing examples. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off with a dream and he ends with the interpretation of that dream. And in the middle, there is another dream that is mentioned and its interpretation is also there. So the dream is... إِذْ قَالَ يُوسُفُ لِأَبِيهِ يَا أَبَتِ إِنِّي رَأَيْتُ أَحَدَ عَشَرَ كَوْكَبَا وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ رَأَيْتُهُمْ لِي سَاجِدِينَ Oh my father, I have seen 11 stars, the sun and the moon prostrate to me. That was good news. The father was a Nabi, Ya'qub alayhi salatu was salam. He knew that this is some goodness. This means Allah will gather us all together one day. But he did not tell that to his son. Rather, he told his son, knowing that this is a great gift. Don't relate this good news to your brothers. Because they might plan and plot against you. They might become jealous of you. What do we learn from this? Those were the children of a Nabi. And something good, he told his son, don't tell the others. When something good happens to us, we don't even have to tell our family members sometime until we've achieved something. Sometimes we're planning to go somewhere. Who says that you have to inform everyone? No, it depends on how important that journey is. You don't have to always inform everyone of your next move. You don't have to tell them about your business deals. You don't have to tell them about anything. You should seek assistance in fulfilling your needs by being secretive to a certain extent. You don't have to tell everyone everything because shaitan is bad. They might be good. <laughs> shaitan is an outright clear enemy against man. So even if a person does not want to be jealous, you find that sometimes shaitan puts in a spear, an arrow, 
in interferes and makes a person jealous. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us jealous. When a person has a child, for example, a little baby, for those who are newly married who have children, alhamdulillah, if the baby sleeps all night, you don't have to tell the whole world, you know what, that baby, mashallah, sleeps all night. From that night on, the baby might not sleep because Ain and the evil eye might attack that baby. You can say, look, that's a normal child. You know, they sleep. You know how children sleep. So you haven't lied. Alhamdulillah. At the same time, when, it, when something good happens, you don't have to tell everyone. And if you tell them, make sure they say, mashallah, in front of you, don't be shy to say, say mashallah. Let them say it. So what? Alhamdulillah. We will save ourselves. In fact, even in this surah, we will see how Yaqub alayhi salatu was was worried about the evil eye befalling the fact that he had children, huge, beautiful, handsome children, all walking together, united. He didn't want people to see that. So when they were entering Egypt later on, he told them, enter separately. Why? So that people can't affect you with the evil eye. Allahu Akbar. The evil eye is true. The hadith says, al haqqun. It is true. It can affect a person. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. But remember one thing, not every sickness that you have is the evil eye. Sometimes everything we have, people say, you know, someone did magic on me, man. You know, I, I don't understand that someone is jealous of me, man. Sometimes it's just a health ailment. Maybe you've eaten a bit too fast and some gastric movements in the stomach and you think there is jadu or you think there is a little bit of magic that someone has engaged in. May Allah protect us. A little bit of enos will do the trick, inshallah. <laughs> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is informing us here in Surah Yusuf that we need to know who to talk to and how to talk, what to tell, who to tell. Then this Nabi had these children and these children, subhanallah, they were the children of the Anbiya, Nabi Yaqub alayhi salam. Do you think he gave them an up upbringing that was anything less than perfect? No, it was a perfect upbringing. But on top of that, they planned to kill their brother. Imagine. That means sometimes jealousy levels with, between brothers and family and blood can get to the point of wanting to, to eliminate someone. May Allah protect us. It is haram. It is prohibited. So one of the older brothers felt a little bit, you know, a little bit remorseful and he felt a bit shy. He says, La taqutulu Yusufa wa alquhu fi ghayabatil jubbi. Don't kill him. Throw him into a pit and someone will pick him up and maybe they'll take him to a far off land. So what they did is they hatched a plan. They went to their father. They told their father that what's wrong with you they're telling their father why don't you release yusuf salam? release him with us tomorrow and we will go we will graze the flock and so on we will play and we will come back you know what the father says I fear if I send him with you, it will make me sad, number one, because he will be away from me. You'll take him for the whole day. And there is a possibility that whilst you're not watching, a wolf might eat him. They used the same plan. They took him, they released him into that pit and they came back with the false blood on a shirt and they said, you know what? A wolf ate him whilst we weren't watching. Imagine. The same thing the father suggested, they took it up and they actually came back with the same words. How many of us are fooled by our children sometimes? It's a, there is a possibility. If a Nabi could be told that by his own children. Do you think our children don't lie to us? They come to us from madrasa later on in the afternoon and say, you know what? Today that sheikh, that imam, that teacher, he did this and that. We roll our sleeves and we want to beat up that imam by believing a child five years old. Imagine. Yet we don't realize that that could be a lie. Go out, defend the teacher. Say, look, if that's what he did, that's your teacher. Why did you engage in something bad? May Allah protect us all. There's so many examples that we could actually give, but let's move on. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that he was thrown into this pit and they picked him up. When they picked him up, what does Allah say? They regarded him as merchandise. And they said, no, this will make money out of this. You know, sometimes when we pick up lost property, what do we do? Very valuable. You pick up a blank check. It tells you a million rands. What do you do? Very tempting. May Allah grant us iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who can hand it back. You know what happens sometimes like what we read in the newspapers in countries like these you find you hand back a large amount of money to the cop shop to the policeman sometimes it disappears from there but don't worry so long as you didn't steal it may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us 
So the same applies here. These people, what do we learn from them? They looked at an innocent boy, a very handsome man. They said, no, we'll make money out of this. Come, bring him into this. They sold him at the next market. Someone bought him, a very wealthy man bought him. And in a nutshell, what had happened? The wife of this minister of Egypt had an evil intention when she saw this handsome man, handsome Yusuf, alayhi salatu wasalam. She says, you know what? He's a worker for us. He works for us. Let me advance sexually. How many of us are guilty of making sexual advances at the workplace? Let's be honest. This lesson comes from Surah Yusuf. Whether it is male or female is besides the point. The lesson is don't ever make sexual advances that are haram, especially at the workplace. If someone is working for you and don't think that this person here is actually under me. So let me try my luck. Allahu Akbar. May Allah safeguard us. Look at the example. Who would have guessed that we learned this from the surah? So Surah Yusuf, the Nabi of Allah, was actually someone attempted to lure him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected him. And thereafter, this lady became so upset, so angry, that then the people, the other ladies, obviously everyone speaks about that lady because she is the minister's wife. She is supposed to have been a role model for everyone. The other ladies began to speak and they said, you know, this lady here, she actually wants to do something with her own workers. Imagine, may Allah protect us all. So she said, let me fix these ladies. They don't know how handsome this man is. So she prepared a little sitting for them and gave each one of them an apple with a knife. A fruit with a knife. And she told Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, because he was a worker, he had to obey the instructions. I want you to pass from here when they're all seated. As he passed, they were so engrossed in looking that they cut their hands. Allahu Akbar. Imagine how handsome he must have been. They were so engrossed in looking that they cut their hands and they said, مَا هَذَا بَشَرَا إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا مَلَكٌ كريم. This is no ordinary human being. This is an angel. This is an angel. Allahu Akbar. What do we learn from this? Let's draw a jewel from it. We learn from it that whenever our eyes and our gaze is not controlled and we happen to look at the opposite sex more than what we are allowed, in that case it will result in destruction of one way or another. Let me give you an example. Sometimes you're driving your motor vehicle and someone happens to pass quite good looking and you turn, you might bump the car in front of you. It can happen. Why? It's similar to cutting the hand. It will cause bodily harm, material harm. It will cause lots of harm. It's a fact. Sometimes if you engage in an act, you might end up with a huge disease. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. So this is a lesson to say anyone who wants to follow that path, there is destruction coming your way. Do you know that we are taught by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when you have wealth, a salary at the end of the month or wealth, and there is no barakah in it, no barakah at all. Ask yourself, you probably engaged in a sin. You probably oiling some of your bad habits, maybe casino, maybe gambling, maybe drinking, maybe nightclubs, maybe drugs, maybe a woman, maybe someone of the opposite sex. You need to pay money. You need to look after someone more than what Allah has shouldered upon you. How can there be barakah in your wealth? So if you find your money is running away quickly, leave the sins and you will find that 500 rands will last the whole month. You'll still have 450 inshallah. May Allah grant us barakah in our wealth. This is a very important lesson we learned from in Surah Yusuf as well. Country. From jail to presidency, alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all understanding that not everyone in jail is actually guilty, as we said. So from the jail term, he was made a minister. And he was given a chance to cleanse himself because he refused to become the minister until he was allowed to ask the ladies a question. Who was guilty, me or you? And they actually had to confess to say, you know what? We were the guilty ones, you were innocent. So whoever is accused falsely, Allah will give you the opportunity to clarify your name one day, inshallah. If not today, then in the akhirah, inshallah. Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how the brothers had come to him begging him, begging him for food. Now look, what lesson do we learn from this? Those who plan the downfall of others... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will drop them lower than those whom they are planning the downfall of. To the degree that one day they might come begging to the same person that they had planned and plotted against at some point. So two lessons. One is we should not plan and plot against someone else. Leave it to Allah. And two is when someone plans and plots against us, don't stress, don't grieve. The story of Yusuf alayhi salam is there as an example for myself and yourselves. So Alhamdulillah, when they came, a long story occurred and thereafter it resulted in them being united with 
the whole family. And there are many stories. In fact, uh, Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam had lost his eyesight. And Yusuf alayhi salam says, take my shirt and go and drop it. Go and give it to my father. His sight will come back. Do you know what medicine has discovered recently in the last few years? I read an article whereby they say the sweat of man, human sweat, can actually solve some visual problems in the eyes. A type of cataract can actually be cured through a drops. They were, they were actually uh, researching this in Switzerland. The drops with human sweat content in it. Allahu Akbar. Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam just said it. Take my shirt and go and give it to our father. Cast it on him and his eyesight will return. That's exactly what happened. Now, years later, we don't even know how many years later. But how many years after the revelation of the Quran? More than 1400 years later. People are discovering that indeed, the sweat of human beings has a role to play. I've read the article myself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all understanding that this Quran is the book of Allah. Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how the parents came together and everyone came together and then the statement was made by Yusuf alayhi salam. Ya abati hadha ta'weelu ru'iyaya min qabl. Oh my father, this is the interpretation of the dream that I had in the very beginning of the sun, the moon and the eleven stars. So the sun was depicting the father of the house. The moon was depicting the mother of the house and we've got to listen to this carefully. And the stars were depicting the eleven children. If you take a look at the qualities of the sun, strong, powerful, it shines, everyone feels secure in the presence of the sun. We go out, we work, we earn sustenance, we come back, we feel so secure. That is, those are the qualities of the sun. Every father in every home needs to have the qualities that the sun outside has. He needs to present, give the warmth in the house, the sense of security, bring in the sustenance, make everyone feel secure and make them feel well don't we feel so good when the sun is out we run around without any fear alhamdulillah those are the qualities that allah has kept in the sun they are supposed to be in every successful father of every home the moon beautiful you can look at it mashallah you can admire it the moon the light of the moon is solely derived from the sun do we know that the, sh the brighter the sun the more you see of the moon so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept the example of the moon, the example of the successful mother in the house. The stars who are the children, you don't see them during the daylight. If you look at the sun, you won't be able to see it directly. You will probably need some glasses. That is the respect of the father in the house. Not to say we shouldn't look at him, but we respect him. But when the moon is out, the stars are twinkling, mashallah. It shows the closeness of relation between the children and the mother. Alhamdulillah. Let's try and understand this example. It's a very deep example. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us successful mothers, amazingly, they should be having the qualities of the moon. Can I give you one more jewel that we extract? The moon goes through a 28 day cycle. Precisely. Some days it's not there. Some days it's there. The same applies to a woman. She goes through a 28 day cycle. Some days she is there. Some days she is not there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the true understanding. Wallahi, when Allah gives an example, it is a perfect example that fits. And if we think that it is not a perfect example, we need to revisit our intellect because the creator cannot make a mistake. The stars, alhamdulillah, we've seen. Now let me tell you, and we want to end with this. Inshallah, I might mention one verse of Surah Al-Ra'd, seeing that I've taken a little bit more time because it's an interesting surah today. Very interesting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us yet another example. When we mix the roles, when father wants to play role of mother and mother wants to play role of father, what happens? There is chaos and confusion. They are fighting. The children lose the most. Don't we agree? The children suffer the most. Because these two have now confused their roles. So when the sun goes into the place of the moon, the moon goes into the place of the sun, we have an eclipse where you can see neither of them. Amazing. And what happens? The stars are nowhere to be seen when there is an eclipse. The same way when we mix up our roles that Allah has given us, we have what is known as a social eclipse, chaos in the house. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from that sign of Qiyamah. In the same way that an eclipse is a sign of Qiyamah, we are supposed to be engaging in Salah and Istighfar and Tawbah when the eclipse is there outside, when there is a social eclipse in the house, that is also a sign of Qiyamah. We need to be engaging in Istighfar and Tawbah and Salah until the condition returns to normal. 
That is Surah Yusuf. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding beautiful lessons. In Surah Al-Ra'd, which we inshallah we will commence with tomorrow, we will commence speaking about it tomorrow inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how even the thunder praises Allah. يُسَبِّحُ الرَّعْدُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ مِنْ خِيفَتِهِ even the ra'd, even the thunder, even the lightning, all these are creatures of Allah. They are declaring the greatness of Allah, engaging in the dhikr and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we don't comprehend it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all acceptance. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.